Yeah, we're going to baptize you. So we want the voice of God and we want the declarations to go forth. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, believe the Lord, you'll be established. Believe his prophets, you'll prosper. I believe there's power in that. Job 22, 28 says, you shall decree a thing. It shall be established for you. So light will shine on your way. Let me just give you a couple of examples of how prophecy and decrees, and, and a decree is something that each and every one of us have to understand. God's given that to you as a weapon. How many have been fighting in a specific area for your health, for your finances, something, and God gives you just one phrase or one scripture that you just say? Come on, that you just release into the atmosphere, that you just hammer. The Lord says, my word is like a hammer and breaks the rock into pieces. It can't be a long decree, but sometimes it's just a phrase, like America shall be saved. Bam, that's a decree. We've got to learn how to utilize the power of the decree to shift things. The power of the prophetic to shift things. I've told you story after story of prophesying over individuals only to have their lives radically turned around by an encounter where God speaks to them and shifts them out of one way of thinking into another way of thinking. But I want to show you the power of what happens when prophecy and decrees come together. I remember back in the, um, we were just starting to have conferences here, and it was maybe 1988, I want to say. Uh, we were having a conference over at Sandestin, as before this building existed. And a prophet got up, and I don't even think I knew what his name was, but he got up. And this was at a point in time where we still had the, um, we still had the Soviet wall between East and West Germany the communist wall. How many remember that? How many was that before you were born? Okay. All right. So we, there was a communist wall that divided East and West Germany, the Western world from the communist world. And this prophet gets up in our conference and he said, and the Lord says that that communist wall in East Germany has grieved me long enough. And the Lord says, I'm going to tear that wall down stone by stone. And people cheered, and I cheered too, but in my, in my heart, I cheered with my mouth, but in my heart, I was like, oh, that'll be great if that happens. <laughs> the Berlin Wall, okay? Why? Because it had existed there my entire lifetime. How many understand we get stuck in what we think is possible? And even though they prophesied it, it was hard for me to actually really come into agreement with it because it seemed so entrenched. And then it was just about a month or two later that President Ronald Reagan got up and he made this decree. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. How many knew that he was actually making a decree? And it was just a matter of months later, maybe a year later, I think it was November of 1989, the people rose up, they took pickaxes and hammers, and they tore that wall down piece by piece. I actually have a piece of the Berlin Wall someplace in my house. Hopefully it's not thrown away because I threw away a lot of his rocks. Because he picks up rocks everywhere. Hopefully I didn't throw that away. <laughs> But can you see the power of how something gets prophesied, God begins to release his will, then somebody comes along and decrees it, and then we see a fulfillment. I'll give you another example. Back in 2003, when we had just entered the Iraqi war um, against Saddam Hussein, um, Chuck and Dutch were going around to all 50 states, and they were releasing you know, the word of the Lord over every, every state in the United States. And they came to... Uh, San Antonio, Texas, and when they were there, they were meeting in this big, this big uh, church there with a, a couple thousand people, and I think um, Dutch was preaching, and in the middle of Dutch preaching, now this was December, we had been at war for, I think we'd, I think we'd been there for like maybe eight months, and we still had not found Saddam Hussein. Do y'all remember that? I know I'm reaching back into history to give you these examples, but um, so, so Dutch is preaching and Chuck gets up in the middle of Dutch's preaching and he says, the Lord says that I put a grace on the state of Texas and on this particular location to turn the battle at the gate. 
And he says, right now, he said, I decree, he said, he, right now the Lord says that the strong man of Babylon who has been in hiding will be hidden no longer for I'm ripping the occult cover off and within seven days, Saddam Hussein will be found. And we've been looking for him for eight months. And he gets up and he says, within seven days, he will be found. And if you know Ch Chuck and Dutch and you know the inside story, Chuck turned around and looked at Dutch and went, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> okay. And so Dutch followed him up then and began to release a decree. And he said, right now we decree that the spirit of the occult that's been holding uh, holding the, 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 the secrecy, the spirit of the occult that's been keeping him hidden is being torn off and we come into agreement with the word of the Lord. We decree he will be found in the next seven days. The next thing that happened is the general got up and he was from Fort Hood, Fort Hood, which is right there in the San Antonio area. And he said, right now we have, and I think it's the 101st Infantry Division, Forgive me if that's not right, but um, he said, right now we've got the 101st Infantry Division from Fort Hood right here that is serving over in Iraq. He said, he's a general. And he got up and he said, Lord, I decree that you are going to use the 101st Infantry Division to carry this decree out and to fulfill the word of the Lord. We release an anointing on them now to go and do that. This is from Texas. We're talking about spiritual warfare. Releasing prophecy, releasing decrees. I want you to know, three days later, it was an individual from the 101st Infantry Division from Fort Hood, Texas, that found Saddam Hussein hiding in that spider hole. Come on, three days later, didn't even take seven days. Why am I telling you these stories? Because we have to understand the power that is in our mouth. We've got to understand that we have a creative power when we start prophesying, that we've got an authority when we start decreeing. And if you're not engaging your mouth and you don't know how to do it, pick up your Bible and start reading your Bible out loud. There is a power that just comes from that. Write a decree, not so that you can read it and meditate on it. Do you realize that the word meditate in Hebrew is actually a Hebrew word that means to murmur out loud under your breath? We think meditate means to get stuck in your thinking. That's not even what it means. It means take something, chew the cud, like a cow chews the cud, and say it out loud under your breath on a continuous basis. That's what meditate actually means. How many understand God wants to release the power of our words? So we're going to lift through prayer and praise. We're going to shift things through prophecy and proclamations, and then we're going to push Pray until something happens, P-U-S-H, okay? We're going to push through prophetic acts and through power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Dunamis, miracle working power. Come on, we cannot change this in our natural strength, but we can change this with supernatural strength. And there's a power dynamic that God wants to release through us. He wants to release it through every one of us. Not just through pastors, not just through pulpit leaders. He wants to release it through every single one of us. The dunamis power of God, the anointing of God flowing through every single one of us.